Okay, so good morning and welcome to your content speaking lecture. So my name is Kevin. I will be your lecturer for today for this content speaking lecture. And it is one of the only two major lectures concerning the speaking subtest. So first of all, it's to you the importance of this lecture and uh, the comparison of the other major lecture. Why are they separated? What makes them so different from one another? So first of all, both the writing and speaking subtests are assessed differently as compared to listening and reading. Well, practically listening and reading, all you need to do is to answer questions. So it's either you're correct or you're not, you will get points off of it. But for speaking and writing, the assessment varies. And the content, so when you say content, the, the substance of your input, basically what your answer is, the relevance of your answer, of how examiners would appreciate your answers also matter. So we have a separate lecture for the content concerning the writing exam. So we will be doing that in the future, not today. So we will be focusing more on the attributes of the speaking subtest concerning the content part, which basically summarizes the overall substance that you can provide to the examiner. Basically, whether your answers are not only accurate, but it's something that will not bore them, okay? So later on, you will get a much more uh, in-depth analysis of what this substance mean, okay? So, but before we proceed, I just want to, um, to enumerate some of the common misconceptions that my students in the past and my students now are having. So basically, most of you will be taking the examinations very soon. I know that. And you're probably thinking that listening, I have tried reading. I haven't tried the speaking practice. And I think that speaking is difficult. All right. Well, to be honest, speaking is partly difficult. It's not too difficult for um, candidates like you. If I'm going to arrange them in order, okay, if I'm going to arrange them in order, this is the difficulty level from the easiest to the most difficult. So number one, I will put listening as the easiest because you just have to listen and then to wait for answers. And even the answers are even going to be spelled out to you. All right, number two is the speaking exam. Yes. I'm not belittling, I'm not mocking the speaking test, but let me remind you that this is not as difficult as the reading test because most people fail to put the effort that they are required to, to put for the reading exam. And that affects the overall performance when they reach the testing center. And the most difficult is none other than the well, by the way, if you're having difficulty with writing and you're planning to go to the UK, um, it's a good news that from seven, their past overall requirement, their requirement for writing now is 6.5. And did you know that 6.5, this is the national average of the Philippines in writing. And when we say national average, 70% of test takers in this country are not enrolled in review centers like this. So as, uh, as reviewees of 9.09er, the best review center in town, you have a much better edge in getting a higher band score, not only in writing, but also with the speaking exam. Now, for the speaking test, the national average of the Philippines is 6.8. Now, getting a 6.8 is not going to happen, because it's either you get 6.5 or it's either you get seven. Now getting a seven from 6.5, many people forget that there is a huge wall that divides 6.5 to seven. I repeat, okay? From 6.5 to seven, many people think that the distance is near from 6.5 to seven. Once again, 6.5, 
seven people will think that they are this near to each other, practically they are far apart. Your 6.5 to 7, you need a huge jump. You need a huge leap. But sir, I did well in vocab. I know I don't have mistakes 6 in grammar. But why did I get 6.5? Whereas my classmate, who I know, is not that good in vocab, not that good in grammar, got 7.5 even. Now, this is exactly what I want to tell you, that this examination is biased, and it is determined by none other than your content. So again, let me repeat this. There are so many technical aspects of the speaking exam. Again, we will be discussing more about that further. All right, we'll be discussing that later, those technical aspects. But it's the gap between getting a 6.5, which is a failing score for most of the candidates. Again, some people might say, sir, five is good for me. Sir, six is good enough for me. Sir, 6.7 is something that I will be thankful for because uh, I'm going to go to Canada and I just need to get six. I just need to get five. Now, you see, that's the mindset. That's the mindset that I don't want my students to have. Ayoko ng thinking nyo na gusto Ayoko ng thinking na gusto ko lang ng sais. Remove that from your system. Throw, throw that mindset away. I want you to get a 7, 7.5, 8, 8.5, or even a 9. Okay? I want you to get that. I want you to get those scores. A 7 or higher. Is that achievable? Yes. Summary is the speaking exam difficult? Practically not. If you're going to follow all the steps that I'm going to teach you today. Okay? So, speaking is not as difficult as it may seem to many people, but some people might find the speaking test scary. And that is the second misconception that I would like to, to put an end to. All right? The speaking exam is not scary. It is only scary for people who did not prepare. It's so simple. If you know, okay, I'm going to write a text here. If you know what to expect, then the preparation would be much accurate. All right? So this is something that we would like to, to move away from the equation. This is the topic that I would like to, to minimize. All right? As much as possible, this is the idea that I want you to understand is that the more you fear something, the more difficult it becomes. You know, what makes people become anxious? All right, you know, the basic definition of anxiety, right? Anxiety is the fear of the unknown. Simple as that. It's the fear of the unknown. You know, people are afraid of something that they don't know. Like people are not afraid of the dark because it's dark. They are afraid of what's in the dark. Okay, people are not afraid of talking in public. They're not afraid of speaking in public. People are afraid to make mistakes when they speak in public. And in those instances that they make mistakes, all right, people will laugh at them. That's what they're afraid of, okay? So basically, we want to remove the anxiety on your part. We don't want you to be fearful because when you're afraid, you lose confidence. And when you lose confidence, it affects you both physically and mentally. So we don't want that to happen. All right? So remember that something is only scary if you do not know much about it. Nakakatakot ang isang bagay na hindi mo alam. That is the phrase. Okay? That's the whole phrase of it. But once you get to know what that something is, 
you are going to study everything about the speaking test. Ngayon, hihimayin natin yan. From the basic molecule, from the simplest form, we will break down everything today of what the speaking subtest is so that you will understand, you will know what to expect, and you will be doing the preparations intended for you to do. So is it scary for people who are not willing to take okay, the risk? For those people who are not willing to take the leap, it is going to be scary. But to be honest, it's not. The summary for this question, whether the speaking test is scary, is not. Examiners are intimidating. Well, this one is partly true. Examiners are intimidating. Some examiners might want to see you squirm. Some examiners will be asking you questions which you may or may not have familiarity of, all right? But remember, it is still a pleasure and privilege not to let yourself down. So whatever question the examiner asks you, whether the examiner's aim is to see me squirm or to see me um, break down or the examiner wants to see me weakened, all right, you will answer every question. And let me tell you this, there is an answer to every question, even though if that answer is something that you don't know. And I am going to teach you how to today. So again, all the problems that you have, all the questions you have right now, all the concerns you have, we will be putting, that, putting an end to them, to those questions. We will be putting an end to your end. We will be saying about it is in to get a seven in this category. All right. Now hear me out. All right. Getting a seven. Okay. Getting a seven in the speaking subtest is actually much easier than to get a seven in writing. A highlight getting a seven in writing. It's actually much easier as in writing. So again, put the end mark on those questions that you have. Common misconceptions, the answers to them. Speaking, it's not difficult. It is not scary for those who will prepare. Examiners would try to intimidate you, but you will not show any. Um, any forms of fear, okay, from this. And it, it is impossible to get seven? No, it is possible. It is actually much easier to get a seven in speaking than it is to get seven in writing. All right, so before I proceed with the next uh, discussion, you guys have any questions? Jeffrey, Leslie, Princess? Uh, jo, Al, uh, Alvin, and Nina, do you guys have questions or concerns? Anything at all? All right. You don't have any questions, so let me continue. Now, overview. You see, you have your classmates here during this lecture. And in our Facebook group, you see tons. You see all of your classmates. And we have different modules. We have academic module, we have GT module, we even have the um, life skills visa. Okay, life skills visa, for those of you who don't know, the life skills visa, all right, so life skills, is a UK VI test. Those immigrants who wish to go to the UK or perhaps any immigrant or immigrant's family who would like to migrate to another country. So life skills visa only contains two exams, listening and speaking. So they don't have reading, they don't have writing, they only have the listening and speaking. So you see, even for your life skills visa, your module, you have your academic, you have your general training, the speaking test would be the same. 
same set of questions, same length of time, same examiner, everything will be the same. There is no difference whatsoever. So remember, for both of your exams, we have been over with this many times, all right? But I just want to clarify that for ACAD and GT, the similarities of your exam would be your listening and writing task two, essay writing will still be the same. For academic, your reading is much more tough. Your GT reading is easier. Your task one will be different. So the questions, my students for academic and general training are going to be the same on the same day, on the same um, testing center. All right. So there's no difference. So if you're asking me, if you're going to ask me right now, sir, meron po bang difference? Wala. All right. Academic and general training modules, speaking test will be the same since the beginning of IELTS. And it's not going to change anytime soon. All right. It will still remain the same for many more years to come. So objectives. What are the things that I want you to accomplish today? I want you to be able to organize a speech. I want you to be able to organize your answers in the IELTS speaking exam. To be able to come up with an effective answer to questions asked in the speaking subtest. That is also going to be one of our uh, goals. And lastly, how to be able to practice to become a better speaker. Okay, and in doing this, to be able to practice how to become a better speaker, there's no other, there's no other option for that. There's no other way how to become better in terms of speaking exam but to practice. And for you to practice, you have to undergo my one-on-one -on -one coaching. But, so just, I just want to put a highlight because this is uh, the very early phase of my lecture. And most of the replay watchers would only be watching the early phase of my lectures. But, in this one-on-one -on -one coaching, I just want to put an emphasis on this, all right? One-on-one -on -one coaching is a simulation. A simulation is basically something that we would like to emulate. We want to copy. We want basically the same thing that you would experience on the exam. Okay, that's the first. So in this phase, I will pretend that I am your examiner and you are the candidate. And we're basically going to do the interview online. Let me repeat this. The one-on-one -on -one coaching or speaking is an interview which is conducted by none other than me because I'm your lecturer in this branch and I'm also your coach. You don't have any other choice, all right? And I'm going to basically ask you questions the same way as examiners will be asking you questions on the exam. But here is the catch for your one-on-one -on -one coaching. This is by schedule, all right? This one-on-one -on -one coaching is by schedule. Let me repeat for those people who cannot understand simple instructions. This one-on-one -on -one coaching is by schedule. The schedule for general training would be Wednesday. All right? The schedule for general training will be Wednesday of every week. So this week, tomorrow is Wednesday. That means GT speaking coaching. Next week, Wednesday, that means GT speaking coaching. Wednesday of every week, GT speaking coaching. Now, what about academic? Academic, Thursday of every week, you will have your one-on-one -on -one coaching. That means that this week's Thursday, next week's Thursday, 
you will have your one-on-one -on -one coaching. So GT, Wednesday, ACAD, Thursday. All right? Let me just remind everyone that that will be the case for the month of October. Now, another um, rule for your October's coaching session. For October, all right, this coaching slot for Wednesday and Thursday would only be allotted for those who will take their exams on the 23rd of October, 30th of October, and on the first week of November. Again, let me just clarify. This one-on-one -on -one coaching slot is only given for those who will take their exam this October and first week of November. So meaning, sir, I want to take my exams in December. That's a question. Sir, I want to take my exams in December. Does that mean I am not included in your coaching list this month? Yes, because I have more than 30 students for one coaching session. And that this month will be um, their month. They will be the priority. We have done this since July. July, for the months of July, the test takers of July, I um, I did this one-on-one -on -one coaching. Took the exams last week of July. All of them passed the exam. We did this in August. We did that back in September, and now we are going to do this for this batch in October. So, for people who will be taking their exams. On the second, third, fourth week of November, for the people who will be taking the examinations by the first, second week of December, because we don't have third and fourth week, uh, sorry, December, since that is basically, um, that's basically holiday break. So let me just clarify. All right. Later, may nag-chat. Mamaya ako yan check All right. I just want to, to highlight on this. To put a highlight on this, all right? The practice for this month is only for October and November first week. Can for if you're going to take the examination for the second, third, and fourth week of November, you will have your chance, but not for this first two weeks of October. I just hope that I made myself clear with that. All right. So, okay. Um, Aljay Nina, question. Sir, yung November 11 po. Aljay Nina, I will send you a message directly. Later, we will talk about that. Okay. What about Jeffrey Mendoza? San po yung sa November? Jeffrey, which date exactly in November do you plan to take the exam? Sir, saan po ba ang venue niya? Uh, sir, basically, um, what you're going to do is to do a simple Google search. So you will just type in the keyword IELTS exam member. Or if you want, Sir Jeffrey, we can send the list to you. Flower, the assistant will be the one to send you the complete list of when and where the exams will be held in the Philippines. So for those of you who don't know, Okay, we have a monthly examination in Kampanga. And the monthly examination in Kampanga happens um, in different locations. Sometimes it's in Holy Angel University, sometimes in a hotel. So we will know when we book the test. That's the only time that we will know. All right. In Kabanatuan City, we only have four times a year. So we have the February, you have the May, you have the July, August for IDP British Council, and then you have the December. But this month, they will be hosting one in October. 
I don't know if they will be hosting one again in December. So, but for November, Manila examination always happens um, four times a week. So let's say examination soon. Can I take it? Yes, next week, take the exams in Manila. So we have different venues. You have Tugigarao, you have Baguio City. Don't take the exams in Baguio City. Don't ask me why, just don't. If you want to take the exams in Baguio City, you're on your own. Don't. All right. You have Ilocos. You have um, Urdaneta City, Pangasinan. You have Pampanga. You have Laguna, Rizal, Tagaytay. You have Cebu. You have Davao. You can basically take the exams anywhere you want. All right. You just have to let me know when do you plan to take it? Where do you wish to take it? by sending me a message, your complete name, your module, your testing venue, your testing center, your preferred test date. Is that clear, Jeffrey? Yes, sir. All right. So for the complete list of the examination venues and dates, where and when you wish to take the examinations, you may contact Flower about that matter. And he will be replying to you as soon as possible because he's the one delegated to do that task about the, the examination application. So what are the qualifications? What are the requirements to take the exams? Flower will also send you a message about that. All right? So that is basically what we're going to do. So for the November test takers, okay, for November test takers, we will be uh, creating a group chat just for you. And that will be on the third and fourth week of October so that your preparation would be one month. Okay? So that your preparation would be one month. So once again, October test takers, we will be creating a GC for you. Okay? Starting later this afternoon, I'm just waiting for the people to send me a message. I made announcements, but some of you just don't follow those announcements anymore. So I'm, I'm shouting out to those people who still don't know what to do. That is basically what will happen. We will be doing a, a GC, and that's where I'm going to post your own personal schedule. All right? I will be calling you via Messenger. What's the reason why Messenger is our preferred why Messenger is our preferred application? Because Messenger has a feature of unsending a message. And you will later know why this feature of unsending a message is important to our practice. Okay? So, any questions with our objectives before we continue? Anyone? All right, none. So let me just clear my drawing so that we can proceed to the next slide. Okay, your examination, the, the whole exam would last for 11 to 14 minutes. You know, the, the longest time would probably be around 15, but it doesn't happen very frequently. So this 15 minute exam, is divided into three parts. The first part, okay, part one, is your introduction interview. The introduction and interview phase of your examination lasts for four to five minutes. So what are the ideas that we would expect for your part one, introduction and interview. So basically, as the name implies, this is the part where the examiner introduces him or herself. And this is the part where the examiner confirms your identity. Like this. Hi, my name is Ian Wong. I will be your examiner for today. What is your name? Hi, Ian. 
My name is Kevin. Please call me Kevin for short, because that is how my friends and family calls me. It's a pleasure to meet you. That is the introduction part. And the introduction part doesn't stop there. Examiner asks you general questions on familiar topics. Basically, things about yourself. And you know what? That is what makes the speaking test easy. Because the answers to the question are ideas you already know. Because the topic questions will be about you. Now, is that difficult? All right, Leslie, is uh, telling the examiner the place where you live difficult? No, po, sir. No? What about you, princess? Is telling the examiner uh, the place, the university you graduate from, is that difficult? No, po. No. All right. I just want everyone's vote to be counted here. Jocelyn, does telling the examiner your favorite restaurant, is that difficult? No, sir. Christian J. Carrion, does answering the question whether you have a pet or not difficult? Definitely no, sir. Yes. So you see, in, in part one, it summarizes the difficulty level already. All throughout the speaking test, this is going to be about you. So there's no uh, problem, right? That is where most people fail. Kasi sasabihin nila, hindi naman sir madali eh. Hindi naman sir mahirap eh. Nasabihin sa examiner yung favorite restaurant ko eh. Pag tinanong kita ngayon, what's your favorite restaurant? Sagot mo, uh, uh, uh. Patay na. Di ba? So, in preparation for the speaking test, you have to make yourself familiar with the basic questions asked in the IELTS, particularly related to part one. So anything about you, all right? So what are the things about you? Let me write a list here, all right? Your likes, dislikes, your interests, favorites, past experiences, Relationship with people. Personal preference. Whether you would like to watch television or you want to go out and have fun. So which do you prefer? Watching TV or spending time outdoors? So you have to not only answer, but to explain to the examiner why. There's always a reason to your answer. So that's what makes this part a bit difficult. All right? So all the parts of your questions in the introduction and interview phase would be about you. So, and you're very lucky. You know why? All right? You know why you're lucky? Um, LJ, Nina, do you know why you're lucky? Or not yet. All right. So let me tell you why you guys are lucky. All right. So I want you to help me out on this one, Princess. Can you read the, the one I typed in red? We have a list of all the questions you may encounter on the test. Exactly. You're lucky because as candidates, you already have 
all the possible questions you might get asked. Now tell me, that's already cheating. Like imagine, imagine taking a test, taking a quiz, taking a seat work, where you already know what questions you will get asked even months before your exam. You have more edge than any other people. As my students, you have a much better chance in passing the exam. My wish is that all of you, please, just do your part. I already have all the list of the questions. And every single time, my students undergoing the exam, they share all those questions to us. And what I do is I share those questions on the group. I create a speaking thread so that you can know in advance that if this is the question that my classmate in the past have been asked, there's a possibility that I might get asked with the same question. That's why you prepare. You make preparations. So you were asked, what is your favorite restaurant? Have an answer by now. The examiner will ask you, what is your favorite color? Hindi ka na mag sa mismong exam. May sagot ka na dapat. Leslie, you raise your hand. Do you have a question? Sir, um, are those questions the same even you will take it overseas? Yes. I have students who took the examinations in Australia. You're in Australia, Leslie, right? No, po. I'm in Saudi Arabia, po. Oh, you're, so you're in Saudi. Okay, I thought you're in Australia. Well, you see, um... I just want to share that there were students of mine who enrolled at Niner and they wished to continue their review in Saudi Arabia, in Qatar, in the Middle East. So my three passers, which I haven't shared on my Facebook yet, tatlo yun, nasa Middle East silang tatlo. They have just done the examinations last week. So their examinations questions were already posted on the group and you will be watching you will be seeing those questions soon Leslie after a week okay so Leslie let me tell you this the question that my students here in the Philippines are getting asked with are the same questions that you might get asked in Saudi the same questions that my students in China were asked my student ako in Japan my student ako in Australia New Zealand my student ako in Argentina. My student ako in Germany. The same questions. All right. Did I answer your question, Leslie? Yes, po, sir. Thank you, po. All right. Anyone who has a question before I continue on the next part? All right. So again, what's important here is to establish rapport and connection. I bet there are many nurses that are present here today. All right. And you know how to establish rapport and connection. Um, let me ask a question. Uh, Princess, what course did you take when you were still in college? Nursing. Nurse, all right. Hindi ako all right, so princess, ikaw na tatanungin ko. How do we establish a foreign connection as nurses? Proper communication and Proper trust. communication? Trust? Okay. Well, you know, basically rapport is the first sign of establishment of trust. And for you to establish rapport, all right? You should be honest. You should be truthful, okay, to the examiner. Um, you should have eye-to-eye -eye contact. 
your body must be facing directly towards the examiner. Kinagaralan natin yan. So for you to establish a foreign connection, there are a couple of factors. Kung sinabi mong rapport and connection, yung para bang first time kitang nakausap, pero parang gusto na kitang kuning ninang sa kasal. Yan. Halimbawa, Leslie, nakausap kita, di ba? O gusto na kitang kuning ninang. Agad-agad. Kasi parang ang sarap mong kausap. Hmm. What about Alje and Nina? Hmm. Dahil parang ang lambing yung kausap, parang ang sarap yung gawing Nina, Nino, sa kasal. Yeah. May gets niyo ba yung point? Yes, po. The experience, when you talk to someone, the feeling of euphoria that you achieve just by communicating to someone. Now, I'm going to answer the question, what is your favorite food? I'm just going to answer fried chicken. Kevin, what is your favorite food? Uh, my, my, my favorite food is um, uh, fried chicken. Diba? The way I answered that seemed hesitant. And when you hesitate, when you show hesitation, it doesn't seem like you're being honest. Right? But when you answer something like this, fried chicken is the food that I like eating the most. Because for me, it is one of the only few dishes I know how to cook. So I have tried experimenting with different flavors of fried chicken. I've tried putting many different spices. I've tried rosemary one time. It was actually very flavorful. So even though some people might call it bland and boring, fried chicken being my favorite food. It's actually very awesome because this is the food that I always see myself returning to over and over again. That way, the way I answer on the second attempt is much better because, you know, I am establishing a connection. I'm trying to communicate. I'm trying to connect. I, I, I am establishing eye contact. I'm using hand gestures. I am using my um, body language. I'm nodding my head. I am facing the examiner. Do you get the point? Jeffrey, can you tell me whether are like that? Sorry, Chappie. Okay. Well, the answer, Jeffrey, is that yes, you will be able to answer like that given with proper practice. So practice and exercise makes this um, much better in the future. Okay, any question with part one? Anyone? All right, no one's asking questions, so that means I should continue. So the challenge for part one is how we perceive the audience affects our degree of apprehension. Basically, if you become nervous, if you become afraid of the examiner, and that affects your examination negatively. So the more you fear the audience, the more you fear the examiner, the more nervous you become. And this nervousness can be translated into a physical and mental problem. So we want to avoid becoming, you cannot help yourself but become nervous. But this is what you've prepared yourself for. You tell yourself that. I've prepared for this. So I'm going to do all the things that I need to do to impress myself and the examiner. Yes, Jocelyn, you have a question? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, a uh, question ko lang po. Is it a face-to-face -face interview or is it a, a virtual interview? Like, uh, makikita po ba kami ng sa, mm -hmm. sa 
sa video sa camera lang or is it magkaharap po ba kami together with the interviewer okay. so you were asking about that Jocelyn but you know what I'm saving that for later but since you already asked I'm going to answer that already closely Jocelyn so do you see the star and the heart oh, yes sir so I'm going to draw something so this is the table this um, part right here is your examiner. <laughs> this one is the candidate. I'm putting my drawing. All right. So the examiner is presented by the heart and the candidate is uh, represented by the star. I just want everyone to understand that. Now, the question is whether, sir, um, am I going to see the examiner? So this is your situation one. Situation one. Situation one is where you will enter the room and the examiner is already open. Okay. That's your situation one. Now, the red square right here represents the table between you and the examiner. And this purple line right here is your acrylic glass that separates you from the examiner. Okay, this is your acrylic glass. This means that situation one is you will be doing the interview face to face with an acrylic glass separator and the blue highlight for the star and the yellow highlight for the heart represents the math. So in situation one, this is face to face with a mask on. So when you practice, practice with your mask on. All right? So when we do your coaching, you practice with your mask on. Let me repeat. Because there's a tendency to uh, forget things. Kahit kakasabi pa lang. This is your situation one. We will be doing your face-to-face. -face. You have the examiner on the opposite end, but there is a plastic there is a uh, an acrylic glass that separates you from the examiner for your your yourself and the examiner's uh, protection. All right. So, is that much difficult to communicate? Yes. This this makes the communication much more difficult. Yes, because your um. Your face is being muffled by a mask. So when your face is being muffled by a mask, you have to speak much more slowly. You have to speak much more clearly. And you have to speak louder so that the examiner can hear you on the other end. It is also going to be um, much more difficult to hear the examiner's question. So please, okay, if you do not understand the examiner's question, it is better to ask them to repeat the question rather than to jump into conclusion what the question is. Sa madaling salita, agalugin ko, hindi mo naintindihan ang tanong, mas mabuti nang ipaulit mo ang tanong sa kanya. This time nang mas malinaw kaysa sa gumawa ka ng sarili mong pag-intindi sa tanong na hindi pala yon yung question niya na mali tuloy ang sagot mo. That's your situation one. Situation two. Situation two. Alright, let me just clear my drawing. Alright. So this one, I just want to put a highlight. Um,
Okay. So this uh, purple square represents uh, the place where the examination is being held. Let's say you are in uh, Pampanga. Yeah. Whereas this one is in Manila. So you took the exams in Pampanga. There is a laptop in front of you that connects to the examiner. That means your situation two is virtual. Now, if you're asking me, is there a way where we can determine what type of exam am I going to experience? Is it going to be virtual? Is it going to be face-to-face? Uh, or is it going to be, um, no, we only have two. Is it going to be virtual? Is it going to be face-to-face? -face? The answer is no. We cannot determine whether your exam would be virtual or face-to-face. -face. The only way we can know is when we get there. That's the problem, okay? But both situations I showed you require you to speak much louder, requires you to speak in a much more distinct manner, in a much more clear approach. So you will both be wearing masks in those two situations anyway. That's why you practice with masks on. Did I answer your question, Jocelyn? Yes, sir, clearly. Okay. Later, I will add another topic, which will be the requirements. But again, because we only have limited time, we only have until 12 noon, I am saving that for later. All right, so I hope everyone gets a clear picture of what you would expect for the examination properties. So let me clear my drawing so that we can proceed to the next slide now. So therefore, understand, try to put on a smile and set the tone. Befriend your audience or the examiner. This lessons anxiety in your part. Don't be reactive, but rather a proactive listener. Concentrate on your subject. Speakers lack confidence because they think too much about themselves. Hesitation comes because of too self-consciousness. So I want you to limit this uh, self-consciousness. Um, I want you to be, I want you to remove the perfectionist in you because there's no perfect way to deal with the exam anyway. So um, you just have to answer questions and you just have to wait for further questions. So work on developing enthusiasm for your topic because most of the candidates that I am interviewing, they sound lazy, they sound sloppy. So when you say enthusiasm, it sounds like you're really uh, enjoying what you're doing and you know exactly what you're talking about. So that is the idea of enthusiasm in this area of the test. So part two, guys, let me put the highlight on this. All right. Part two, individual long term, which will last for three to four minutes. I just want to emphasize that part two, the individual long term, is the most important part of the test. Again, part two is the most important part of the test. It's not part one. It's not part three. Part one is when you leave an impression. Part three is when you make a final push. But part two, most important. So let me just put things into perspective, all right? If you get, okay, 
a high score in part one and part three. I just want to write here, part one and this one, part three. Like, sir, this is, uh, I think, a nine performance. All right, part two. But your part only got uh, a very decent score, very decent amount of points. You think you will still fail. You will still fail the test. You will not get seven. You will get six or even lower. Again, your part one was perfect. Your part three was perfect. But your part two isn't. You still don't make it. Now, let's make your part one average. I'm not saying that it's you, you made the tons of errors. Let's make your part one average. All right? So your part one was average. So I will represent it using uh, this one. And then your part three was decent, but your part two was really impressive. Then this is a candidate that is bound to get a seven or even higher. Let me repeat myself here. Part two is the most important part of the test. Not part one, not part three. So you want to try and make part two as perfect as possible. Yes, I've mentioned, I want you to remove the perfectionist in you. One, that's okay. In part three, yes, that's okay. But in part two, it has to be perfect. Part two is where we put all our focus on. So what happens in part two anyway? Well, in part two, the examiner gives you a task card that asks you to talk about a particular topic, a topic that is relevant to you, in which include points that you can cover in your talk. This one, this points right here, determines whether you pass. We call them the bullet points, all right? You will see later, what are those bullet points? What do I mean by them? So bullet points. All right, so it is essential that you answer all the bullet points because if you miss or misinterpret one bullet point, you fail. Simple as that. You want part two to be the most perfect part of your test in speaking. So, sir, nakakatakot naman po yan. No, it's not. The topics here, are about you anyway. And you are given one minute to prepare. What more can you ask for? The speaking test is giving you all the time you need already. I right? just have to use them intelli intelligently. So one minute to prepare. You need the two minutes on the topic. The examiner asks you one or two further questions on the same topic. Later, I'm going to tell you exactly what to expect in part two and how you can answer some. All right, I'm just letting you see what are the goals that we need to establish. But let me just clarify. Part two is the most important thing. Part three is a two-way discussion. This is the final push that I've mentioned a while ago. Um, this is a part where you discuss more general issues and ideas. Sometimes there's a relevant to you, but most importantly, examiners are trying to get their opinions about things. So these are basically continuations of part two. So if your topic in part two, Let's say it's about a TV show. It's about a TV show you like watching. So there's a probability that part three is about the opinions related to, to part two, which in this case is TV. So examiners will ask you about the difference of TV shows when you were young as compared to the TV programs now, okay? Um, what is the advantage of watching TV? What is the disadvantage of watching TV to young people? Why do you think young people and old people watch different type of shows? So that is what you expect in part three. So again, kaya ba nating ma-determine ano yung magiging tanong nila sa part three? Yes. So even though part three, it can be easier because you will be 
uh, able to determine ahead of time what questions examiners in part, uh, uh, what questions examiners will ask you in part three. Well, again, you can determine what questions examiners will ask you in part three because those are basically the questions they have already asked you in part two. But it doesn't always happen because part three is impromptu. Part three is off the cuff. Like they can ask you anything. They ask you about TV. They ask you about ocean. They, they ask you about rain. They ask you about drinking water. They ask you about shopping malls. They ask you about the uh, old and the young. They ask you about anything. But as we can expect in part three, yes, basically, um, what you should expect in part three is that, okay, examiners will be asking you about the past, present, and future of an idea, okay? Um, sometimes it's re relevant to culture about um, comparison between male and female. They will ask you, who do you think is more fashion conscious, male or female? And you have to reason to them why you chose male and why you chose female, if either is your answer, okay? Um, comparison of young and the old. Uh, what else? Advantage and disadvantage. Uh, causes, effects. And uh, lastly, problems. solutions. So those are basically the areas that examiners would explore. So for example, the topic was about shopping. Who do you think shops more, men or women? Why do you think young and old people uh, shops have, shop, uh, have different shopping habits? Or what do you think are the causes of air pollution? What do you think are the solutions to air pollution? So they will ask you those questions. It doesn't necessarily have to be correct, but there is a requirement that your answer is accurate. So you show to the examiner that you have at least basic ideas about general topics around you. So that's exactly what you get uh, from task three. So criteria, how will the examiner assess your performance? Depends on the four areas of the language. You have the fluency and cohesion grammatical range and accuracy, lexical resource, and the pronunciation. So what is fluency and content anyway? How the examiner assess you here? Well, the person first, the examiner first asks um, whether as a person you can handle yourself professionally. So when you handle yourself professionally, it means that you are wearing smart casual attire, all right? Um, you're sitting properly. Your body is towards the examiner. Your face is towards the examiner. You know, does it look professional if you're talking to someone like this? Does it look professional if you're talking to someone like that? Is it professional if you're talking to someone like that? Of course not. So you have to sit properly. All right. What else? Your appearance. Come on. Like your hair is on your face. How can you talk? Like, like that, with the appearance like that. I'm not saying that you should be good looking because basically we're all the same since your face, half of your face will be covered. All right. So if um, you are showing some changes in facial expressions, like you're moving your eyebrows, that's also one of the things that I want you to practice. You're moving your head in agreement to the examiner. Another point is whether as a person, as a candidate, you can relate to different types of conversation. Because part one requires you to be informative, part two requires you to be discursive, and part three requires you to be this, um, able to explain ideas relevant to, to around you, to what's around you. So that is the different types of conversation. You have the intellectual conversation, you have the personal conversation. So 
are you able to shift between those types of conversations with ease or are you having trouble with one or two types of conversation? So does this person grow for terms using fillers like, um, you know, all right. So what is your favorite restaurant? Um, uh, my favorite restaurant is, uh, you know, Jollibee. <laughs> so don't do it like that. So minimize the use of fillers. Um, ah, you know, as much as possible, if we're going to say something like, hi, um, my name is uh, Kevin and uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. It's better to just remove the ah. Hi, my name is Kevin and it's a pleasure to meet you. That's it, all right? So if you can do that, that is much better. When the person relates ideas together, are they coherent or are there some misunderstandings? So when you say misunderstandings, um, so I've mentioned, if you cannot understand the examiner's question properly, you can ask them to repeat the question. Sir, baka sumama na po yung loob nila kasi every question na lang po pinapaulit ko. You know, they understand that. They understand the situation that you're both wearing masks. You have a plastic separator between you. You guys are uh, communicating through a laptop. So they understand that misunderstandings, uh, the buzzy part of the communication could occur. So meron akong student sa Middle East din ito. She mentioned na, sir, I am really worried because I kept asking the examiner to repeat the question. I told her it's fine. And you know what? That person got 7.5. Okay? So just want you guys to remember that. So can the person relate ideas effortlessly in an organized manner? So when it comes to organization, in your common mistakes in speaking lecture, I have enumerated the different types of organizations, how you can respond to the questions appropriately. So you have your um, spatial, you have your um, topical, you have your um, expressive. So uh, if I'm not mistaken, that is five. And I've mentioned as well that there is one very important um, organization, and that is the prep method. Exactly what I'm going to teach you later. Okay, so the, the last Organization of your answer, which is included in your common mistakes in speaking, will be discussed today. All right? So I save that for last because that's the most important part. Now, grammar and accuracy. Um, can you correct yourself when you slip in grammar? My father is the kindest person in the world. And she, uh, I mean, he takes care of us ever since we were young. So you corrected your grammar, no harm done. But um, the most important principle of grammar is that you must be able to speak in complete and accurate sentences considering the elements of grammar, no short sentences. As much as possible, you answer questions, minimum of two, maximum of four statements. All right, always remember that. And pa yung mga madadaling mahuli na mistake, like preposition. So grammar six, may preposition usage tayo. What else? Adjectives and adverbs. We've done that in grammar five. Um, the he, she, medyo madaling marinig yon. What else? Pronouns, nouns, subject verb agreement, tenses. So you have to be careful with those. What about vocab? Is the vocab appropriate? Is it misused? What type of words are you going to use? Of course, you have to choose a much more formal. You have to remember examiners are older than you. So that's why if you're going to ask the examiner to repeat the question, it is much better to do so politely. So, sabi mo, excuse me. Can you please repeat the question? That's it. That's the most polite way of asking the examiner to repeat the question. Actually, there's a lot of ways because I don't want you to, to have the same phrase, you can say, uh, can you please repeat the question? I wasn't able to hear it. Thank you so much. So you have your own version. Uh, would you mind repeating the question again? Because I wasn't able to hear it properly um, previously. Pero wag na wag gagamit ng come again. O kaya ha? Ha? 
gamit na. Excuse me? Excuse me? What else? Um, pardon? Because pardon is incomplete. Pardon is actually short for I beg your pardon. And this is used in a very formal context. So when you say very formal context, we use the, I beg your pardon in courts when you're testifying about something. So those are the list of phrases that you do not want to use. All right, let me put an X mark here. Put an X mark, you do not want to use these. Yeah. So I'm sorry, I wasn't able to hear your question. Would you mind repeating it again? Thank you. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to catch that. Would you mind repeating it? Thank you. So you can try and use variations of that. Um, I want you to use your own uh, creativity for the vocabulary. So does this person have the ability to adjust his or her vocab according to the person she's talking to? Does this person use Philippine English and does this person have the tendency to translate Filipino into English? Because literally, when you translate the sentence word per word, the context is different. So you always have to remember what you're trying to discuss is the meaning. What you're trying to discuss is the context, is the idea. So are you transferring a total idea or are you discussing just a translated version? from a Filipino sentence into English. So you're going to have a tough time if you do so. The vocabulary and lexical resource. What else? Pronunciation. You know what? Vocab, grammar, throw them away. It's not that important. You know what's important? This one. Pronunciation and delivery. Does the pronunciation of the person hinder Effective communication, all right? I just want to share with you. I just want to share with you. I had a student last year with a cleft palate. And he mentioned that, sir, is the reason why you only gave me a five for our practice is because I have this disability. I told that person, no, I'm a very harsh coach. I only give five or four if you deserve it. The reason why I gave you a failing score is due to the fact that you were not able to respond to questions properly. You did not deliver your answers correctly. I'm not saying that your answer is incorrect. I'm saying that the delivery is just not um, done properly. That person, let me repeat that. That person has a cleft palate. And you know what score that person got when he took the examination last year? 6.5. 6.5. Now tell me, do you have an excuse? Any single one of you. All of you have normal facial structures. That person has a cleft palate for crying out loud. But that person still managed to get 6.5. You don't have an excuse of getting lower than 6.5. You do not have an excuse. You don't tell me you can't do it. You don't tell me that. That person transcended through difficulties, but he still managed to get 6.5 because he wanted it so bad. You don't tell me you can't do that. You guys have much better facial structures than that person. But that person got 6.5. All right? So it's all in the pronunciation. It's all in the pronunciation. If the pronunciation hinders the effective communication, that's going to be a problem. So you have to speak much more slowly so that you can make 
your pronunciations clearly. Distinct enunciation. You do not do shortcuts. You access every syllable. You enunciate them. You articulate the words. No shortcuts, no slangs. Speak. Pronounce. What about appropriate stress on words? You know, here's the consistency of many of the students. Like when they speak, they speak like this. Does the person put appropriate stress on words? I like going outdoors because for me, it's really fun. And I enjoy playing with my cousins. It doesn't sound like it. You have to sound like you had fun. I really like spending out time outdoors because it's more fun to spend time playing with my cousins than to spend time louching on the couch, watching TV. Well, I watch TV often, but if I have chances, I would definitely spend my time outdoors than indoors. There should be an intonation variation. So if you're going to say, hi, my name is Kevin Mangulabnan. Please call me Kevin for short because that is what my friends and family calls me. That is flat, dull, boring, dry. So what you must do is to add variations in the tone. Hi, my name is Kevin Mangulabnan. Please call me Kevin for short because that is what my friends and family calls me. It is a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Examiner. Mm. I'm even smiling. That shows enthusiasm. Examiners will not see me smiling because we're basically covered with masks, but the sound is different. You smile. You should put enthusiasm in this. Do they have a glide? Is it consistently heard? Do they maintain consistent volume throughout the conversation? Does the voice quality hinder effective communication? So take care of your voice. Do not drink cold water. Do not drink alcoholic beverages the night before your exams. Do not eat too much sweets because your voice might get worse. If there's no voice. How can you pass the test? So you have to make sure to take care of yourself. Take some rest the night of your test and then make sure that your voice is well modulated. You're not uh, magnifying the pitch too high or you're not practically making your voice sound low. So make it sound as natural as possible through the proper voice modulation. So as I've mentioned, there are vari uh, var variations of uh, way to answer questions. The first one will be your personal answer. Personal answers, the ideas here come from personal experiences. Well, intellectual answers are those that come from uh, other sources like television or magazines or internet, radio even. So if you guys have much, if you guys still have time, I suggest that you watch English interviews. All right. And when you watch English interviews, it is better to try and mimic the way how people respond having fun. So different types of speech have memorized. But this is what we do for part one. We memorize the questions. We memorize the way how you're going to introduce yourself. So we have the extemporaneous speaking. This is your part two. Again, very important. Okay, this is the most important part two. And then impromptu speaking is where you make a final push on the test. So it depends on which type of questions were asked, you're going to use different types of speech. So memorize is mostly used for part one, sampling is practically for part two, and impromptu is going to happen in part three. So those are the types of speeches depending on the types of areas where you are on the test already. So task one, introduction interview. Personal questions occur here about your name, nickname, do not spell out, just give your name and wait for further questions. Be confident. Examiners also ask facts about you, like your age, civil status, birthday, family, hometown. So hometown 
is different from your place of birth. Remember that, all right? So all the questions in part one will revolve into the following. They will feature ideas relevant to your interests, like dislikes, favorites, personality, something unique, even your future plans. Examiners will ask you questions about those. So that is where the area that examiners would explore questions about you. All right. So when was the last time you traveled out of the country? When was the last time you went to the mall? How would you compare shopping in the mall um, with shopping online? Have you ever been disappointed with the product you purchased online? What about your birthday? How did you celebrate your last birthday? How would you compare your most recent birthdays with the birthdays that you had when you were still young? What about trees? Tell me, are there trees in your house? Would you like to plant some trees? Have you ever been in a place where there were a lot of trees? Do you see trees when you peek outside your bedroom window? All those questions would be about yourself. You just have to do a memory recall, visual experience, okay? Okay, now, before I proceed with uh, facts, part one, questions, anyone? Okay, no one's raising their hands, no one's unmuting themselves, so let me continue. Describe your hometown. The examiners will be, describe your hometown. Or they can ask you, do you live in a house or in an apartment? They might not even ask your name. They might not even ask you who you are. They will jump right into the, the business. They will ask you, do you live in a house or in an apartment? So you tell them, I live in a house. It's located in number 594, Pearl Street, Thorinville Subdivision, Abini Extension, in the province of Nepe Siha. The city where I live, it's not the capital city of my province, but it is the center for businesses where many establishments such as malls, schools, shops, and banks can be found. That's how you introduce your hometown. So, ang galing mo naman? Of course, this is part one. You should already memorize where you live by now. That's the problem. Eh? He seemed to tell me that part one is easy. Telling the examiner where you live is easy. Telling the examiner what your favorite fruit is easy or whether or not you have a pet or is easy. But you can't express it in English because you do not have the perspective of storing information. You know what I want you guys to be? You know what I want you guys to be before the exams? I want you to be a metal file cabinet. Okay. Leslie, have you ever seen a metal file cabinet? Yes, sir. Okay. What about you, Princess? Have you ever seen a metal file cabinet? Yes, sir. Okay. Who among the persons present here have not seen a metal file cabinet. Because if you haven't, we have one in the office I can show you. Well, a metal file cabinet, as the name implies, it's a metal, right? All right, it's a metal. You guys see my screen? All right, so this is it an example. I'm just going to draw something here. So this one. You know what? When you open the metal file cabinet, you see a lot of folders, right? Okay. And when you see folders, they are sorted. Letter A, B, C, D, until letter Z. So whatever idea you need to have, all you need to do is to pull the drawer to sort, to search for the file that you need to get it 
to open it and read it. That is what I want your brains to be on the exam. Favorite TV show? This is my favorite TV show. Tell it. Favorite restaurant? This is my favorite restaurant. Tell it. Hindi yung mismo exam, tsaka mo iisipin, ano yung favorite restaurant mo? Ano yung favorite color mo? So in part one, you have to know who you are. You have to dig in who you are as a person. You have to learn what are your likes, dislikes. I mean, my five-year-old niece knows how to tell her hometown in the manner which I did in English. But most of the students cannot. You don't have an excuse. You already know that question can be asked. So when I ask you tomorrow, GT, when I ask you the following day, Akad, I don't want any cuts. I don't want any delays. I don't want any hesitations in those basic common questions. Describe your house, the color of your house, your favorite part of it. All right. Uh, a part of the house, which color you would like to change in the future. Furniture. Do you own a lot of furniture? Have you ever received the furniture as a present? Have you ever given someone a furniture? Profession. Okay. So same goes with, do you live in a house or in an apartment? Another common question is, um, are you working or are you studying? So let me ask you, uh, Leslie. Leslie? Yes, sir. I'm in. How long have you been working in the Middle East? I'm working in the Middle East for over 12 years. Um, usually three years in the private hospital and the next succeeding nine years, I was assigned in a government facility. Mm -hmm. So you worked for the, all those 12 years as a nurse? Yes, sir. I do work okay. as a nurse for that um, years, but I have different responsibilities. Okay. So what was the name of the, the establishment that you're working for? What's, what's the name of the hospital? At the moment, I'm working in the Prince Sultan Military Medical City. It's a 2,000 okay. bed capacity. And I was assigned in family and medicine area okay. in which most of our patients are militaries and their dependents. All right. So Leslie, those are the ideas that I want to hear exactly when I ask you. Are you working? You answer by saying, I am currently employed as a nurse at Prince Sultan Military Hospital for 12 years now. And I could say that I have enjoyed working for 12 years because I enjoy seeing people become healthy. That is my passion, to help people. That's it. You don't say, I am working. Are you working or are you studying? I'm working. But where are you working? What is your job? Where do you work? How long have you been working? It has to be complete. What about, sir, I'm studying. If I'm studying, what am I going to do? Are you working or are you studying? I am currently enrolled at St. Louis University uh, College of Medicine 
I'm taking this course for three years now. I could say that it has been my dream to become a doctor ever since. That's why I took this course and I have not regretted my decision ever since. Saan tanong na sa'yo? Puro tungkol sa, sa studies. What is your favorite subject? Do you think that your favorite subject would be useful for your future career? All right. Do you like mathematics? What is the importance of mathematics in your daily life? So you would be, would be asked about that. So place of work, working hours, length of service, duties and responsibilities, relationships with colleagues. So those are the basic questions you could get asked on the test. So limit fillers as much as you can. Be prepared at all times. Anything can be asked as specific and personal questions. Be proactive. If question is not clear, ask to clarify. Directly answer a question first, then give out the reason because for the reason that, oh, example, do you like eating fruit? Yes, I love eating fruit for the reason that they are very tasty and they are good for the body. For example, I eat banana or two every day because I think that it's good for my body. Because, do you like watching TV? Yes, I like watching TV because I find it an entertaining activity. So you use the words because, you use the words for the reason that to answer questions. Avoid repeating the words used in the examiner's question. So you see what I did? When I asked Leslie, are you working, are you studying? I mentioned, I am currently employed. Or when I said, I am, uh, are you working, or are you studying? I'm currently enrolled at. I didn't say I am studying, I am working. Because that's basically paroting the examiner. And when you say paroting the examiner, you know, they will be having a, a bad time if you're just repeating, if you're just repeating the questions they already gave. So you have to come up with your own. All right, so Kevin, tell me about your favorite restaurant. The restaurant that I like eating at the most is, all right, which do you prefer? Shopping online or shopping in? Well, because of the pandemic, I favor shopping online much more as compared to shopping in the mall to minimize my interaction with other people. And so far, it has been very enjoyable. I have gained a lot of points that I can use in my future shopping experience. That's it, that's how you use it. That's how you do it, all right? So, um, complete the following. What are you good at? What do you enjoy? What are you known for? So, so that you can have a basic idea of who you are as a person. So let us probably um, skip those parts. Let's talk about the most important thing, task two, the individual long-term. Okay. In the individual long-term, the examiner will give you a task card. And the task card contains the main question. Again, it contains two important parts, the main question and the guide points. We call these uh, guide points the bullet points. All right bullet points. You'll be given a pencil and a paper. And during our coaching session, uh, you'll be the one to provide yourself a pencil and a paper. Okay. You have one minute to organize your ideas. Only one minute. So I want you to use it wisely. In this test, you will talk uninterruptedly for two minutes. Meaning, the examiner will not interfere with you during this two-minute time. Start when the examiner told you to start and stop when you're told to do so. So, that is what happens on the test for your task two. Again, I will be highlighting very important ideas in part two because as I've mentioned, this is the most important area of the test. 
Do not limit answers on the guide points. You may expound further, but do not fall out of topic. Do not be preoccupied with the time. You will have a timer, okay, in front of you, and even on the laptop, if you will be experiencing the computer-based test. So do not be preoccupied with the time. Yes, uh, Leslie, raise your hand. Sir, do you have techniques on how to organize the ideas? Yes, later I will teach you. So avoid controversial topics and apply the music of English here in part two. So sample question. Okay, uh, let me change this um, the sample question because I don't want the national bird. I, I'm going to add another. All right, I'm going to add another. Wait a minute. Okay. All right, I just want to ask whether you guys can see my screen now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So I just want to share with you a sample question. I'm going to type it here. Um, talk about favorite food. And then I have the first bullet point. That bullet point is, um, what is this food? How often do you eat it? Where do you buy it? And why do you like this? food so much. So this is exactly what the task card that is given to me now. So what happens here? All right. So obviously, I need to make some preparations. So talk about their favorite food. The first thing that comes to your mind, food must not be in Filipino. All right. Because there's a problem. If the answer to this is in Filipino, you're not basically answering in English. And that's misuse of vocabulary. Well, sir, what if I would like to answer adobo as my favorite food? Can I say adobo as my favorite food? Actually, yes, but you have to translate. So what is the meaning of adobo in English? This is basically vinegar braised um, pork or chicken. So vinegar, braised pork, or chicken. That is adobo. Oh, what about uh, sinigang? We're going to convert sinigang first in uh, English. Uh, sinigang would be... Um, Broiled meat in tamarind soup. Um, one of my students asked me in the past about dinuguan. That's basically pork and blue. What else? Uh, binagongan. Nakagutom na. Leslie, nakakakain ka ba ng mga pork dyan? Not at all po. Again, uh, Leslie, by the way, if you're going to answer, don't mention anything about pork because, you know, your examiner might be Muslim. So they they're not really get along well with pork. So avoid haram things. Again, sabi ko kanina, avoid controversial topics. So later, I will explore more on that. So that's one of the first uh, thing that I would like to share, avoid those haram ideas, like drinking beer or um, eating pork or drinking animal blood. All right, minagawan would be um, 
So, uh, pork. Kasi pork din si binagongan, di ba? So, stir fried pork and sauteed shrimp paste. Okay. Anong? Gusto nyo pa bang sumagot ng kung convert nyo pa sa ganito? I like eating stir-fried pork in sauteed shrimp paste. Kontrol masyadong ano yung haba eh. Diba? Alright. So what I do or what I would do in this situation is I will think about uh, words in English. I would think of food that are already in English. So you know what? My answer to this question about the food that I like eating the most? It's simple. So what is this food I'm going to explain? It's a dairy product. Made of milk, definitely. How often do I eat it? Well, when I was younger, about three times a week. But now, I only eat ice cream uh, once every two weeks. Where do I buy it? We have the convenience store. You have uh, grocery shops. You have fast food restaurants. You have many ways to purchase ice cream. Uh, why do I like this food so much? Tasty. It's uh, a cold treat. It makes me feel relaxed. All right. The examiner said, Kevin, your one minute preparation time is over. So what happens here? Okay, let me remove. These two. All right. Because I only get this. I only have this. And this is in the form of paper, right? Because I basically use a pencil and paper, not typing. Even though you will take the computer-based exam, you will not type your answers in speaking. Same pa rin yan, ba? As I've mentioned, there's no difference between ACAD GT. There's no difference computer-based, pen and paper-based. Everything will be the same. All right. So how am I going to answer? I'm going to answer like this. The food that I like eating the most is ice cream. Ice cream is one of the dairy products that I find really tasty. It is made from cow's milk, but there are also variants where I can choose goat or carabao's milk in the place where I live. I eat ice cream. Teka lang ako, mukha lang ako na stamp. And so basically, I'm done with this bullet point. I put a check. As I speak, I am staring down that paper. I'm going to put a check, which means I'm already done. So I have to speak a minimum of 20 seconds per bullet point and a maximum of 30 seconds. Why? Why minimum of 20, why maximum of 30? Well, you have four bullet points, right? So if you do 30, 30, 30, 30, it's equivalent to two minutes. But I am just going to do in between 20, 25 because I need to introduce, I need to conclude. All right? Let me continue. I eat ice cream three times a week when I was younger. But now that I know too much sugar, is bad for the body, I try to minimize eating ice cream for only once every two weeks, even though it's difficult to do so. I purchase this awesome treat in different convenience stores, in fast food restaurants, and ice cream parlors inside the mall. It's actually more convenient now because I can order ice cream online. The reason why I like this compared to any other food out there, it's because it's tasty. In the Philippines, I live in a tropical country. The climate is really warm. So it's a really cold treat that cools my senses off. So it makes me feel relaxed whenever I eat it. Tapos and two minutes. 
Tingnan nyo ako. Tingnan nyo. Tumingin sa screen. Tingnan. Bilis. Tapos ang two minutes na cover ko lahat. Nabigyan ko yung introduction. Nabigyan ko ng conclusion. Okay na ba? Hindi pa. Tingnan nyo ha. Ito yung gagawin ng examiner. So what does that mean? It means that your examiner is not yet satisfied. So I'm going to add another discussion related pa rin kay ice cream. So what am I going to add? I'm going to talk about the past. I'm going to talk about the present and the future of the topic. So I will choose past. All right? I will choose a past experience. And what I chose will be the first time I ate ice cream. Well, I remember the first time I ate ice cream, I was with my mom. She found out that I was in the top of my class. I was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in kindergarten that time. So she treated me with this strawberry ice cream and uh, I can't forget how it tasted. That's why whenever I feel down, I choose the strawberry flavored ice cream more than any other flavors out there. Tapos. Sabi ng examiner, hindi pa rin daw siya satisfied. So what I'm going to talk about would be the events about the topic. Anong event yun? All right. Ice cream is also one of the common delicacies being served at many different occasions, particularly in children's birthday parties. I also remembered when I was young, the ice cream vendors used to ride these bicycles with a very colorful umbrellas. That's how we can distinguish that they are the ice cream vendors because they have those colorful umbrellas and they have their bells so that I and uh, my friends will immediately know that they were the ice cream vendors because they ring this bell and then we run towards them. So it's really a very magnificent experience that I have um, in the past. Sabi ng examiner. Okay. So did you see guys that? Did you see how I did that? I did not only cover the four bullet points, but I also um, read the examiner's body language. Sir, why are they doing that? Okay. I just want to highlight this. Bakit po ginagawa ng mga examiner yung ganun? Because examiners are trying to help you. Hindi nila pinapahirapan ng buhay niyo. Pinutulungan nila kayong pumasa. Yes, Leslie, you raise your hand. So instead of um, enumerating one, can we add more aside from ice cream instead? Mm, that's that uh, possible. That is something that I would like to also add. The question is your favorite food. So why would you answer two, three variants of different types of food? Eh, ang tanong lang naman, favorite food. So the, it makes it confusing. Leslie, sip mo, sinabi mo ice cream, tapos favorite mo din yung cake, tapos favorite mo rin yung lechon, di ba? So ano na yung bibigyan mo dun ng um, how often do you eat it? Where do you buy it? Why do you like it so much? Tatli yung kailangan mo ipaliwanag. It makes it very confusing. Right, Leslie? Okay po. Okay. Halimbawa, tinanong ha, um, what is the last product you purchased for yourself? Eh, ang dami mong binili eh. Pili ka lang na isa. Para dun lang tayo magpo-focus. You don't have to tell everything. You just have to pick one. And that one that you will choose is something na sa tingin mo, you can talk more about. I can talk about a phone which I bought for myself. I can talk about a flash drive that I bought for myself or this attire that I'm wearing right now I bought for myself. That I have to pick one. So for me, I'd probably choose cell phone because I can distinguish that it has a lot of features, cameras, why I chose this, what are the other cell phones I compared it with before I bought it. So you Pick one, you focus on that one, you explain it discursively. All right? So 
That's it. Well, to be honest, examiners don't normally do this. Uh, add more or add more. You know, the reason why they can say, hey, can you add more? Can you tell me when was the first time you ate ice cream? Is because they want to give you a chance. And they're giving you a chance because your speaking test is recorded. So they can't talk during the part two phase. They can only do hand gestures. So make a good use of those hand gestures. Okay, read your um, environment as well. Okay, let's go back to my question here about the national bird of your country. All right, discuss the national bird of your country. There can only be one national bird of your country. And that is the Philippine monkey eating eagle. So of course, I'm going to put Philippine monkey eating eagle here. Of course, it's an eagle. I have to explain that this is a bird, huge bird. Uh, characteristics, I have to explain the wingspan, how long is it, um, the beak, sharp claws, good eyesight. Uh, I think it's national bird, or what, what does it symbolize? Remember, birds always symbolize freedom. And I think it's national bird because of reasons. Oh, Kevin, your one minute preparation time is over. Now tell me about the national bird of your country. So the national bird of my country is a Philippine monkey eating eagle. This is a really huge bird that belongs to the eagles and hawks classification. The characteristics it has include a wingspan that ranges for up to 1.7 meters, a sharp beak, claws, and eyesight that enables it to catch its prey. I think it symbolizes freedom because my country has been colonized by Spaniards, Japanese, and even Americans. So whenever we see this bird, we are reminded of the freedom that the national heroes fought for, for the country. And I think it's a national bird because it's uh, the pride of my country. It's only found here. And it is one of the largest birds, if I'm not mistaken, the second largest eagle in the world, even larger than the American bald eagle. That's why I think that this national bird really deserves its position to represent our country. The Philippines. That's how you explain. So let me clear my drawings. Uh, let me continue my discussion. All right. So speaking exercise. Okay. About the food you like the most, TV show you like watching. Those are some common part to questions. Grab a friend who you really like to spend time with. Task three, two-way discussion. Guidelines, follow-up of task two. You will experience uh, four to five minutes of questions here. Maybe more of critical questions. They so have to really be focused and may be abstract in nature. So the most challenging aspect of impromptu speaking is in generating and organizing your thoughts. So this is the most important organizer out of the five um, types of speech organizers I've mentioned during your common mistakes in speaking. So sometimes when asked a question, your mind may flood with countless possible answers. Other times you may draw a complete blank. The challenge will even be greater if your topic is on a subject you know nothing about. So definitely, um, that is going to be a factor. Again, your sensitivity to a topic may make it even difficult for you to address it adequately. So regardless of what situation you may find yourself in, it can be very useful for you to know that the method that I'm going to teach you will help you formulate and organize your off-the-cuff response, which is the prep method. Again, ha, this is the most important. I've already discussed um, the four or rather five types of organizers, the methods of speaking. For those of you who haven't attended that lecture, there's a replay soon. So just hang on. But this one is the most important. So you focus here, right here, right now. So the prep method that I was talking about actually uh, means the point, reason, example, and point. So this is the easiest to use. 
You open by stating a point. So your first sentence, listen to me closely. Your first sentence, your first statement would be a direct respond to the topic. And then you're going to provide reasons why you chose that point that you have made and you are going to give examples. Lastly, your conclusion restates the point, uh, restates the point you have made first. So that is how uh, arguably the prep method works, okay? So we will be seeing how to do the prep method in action. So look at this, this is the question. Kevin, tell me something about a place where you would like to spend your holiday vacation. I am being asked directly, what place is this? So look at the point. Malta is a wonderful holiday destination. Question, did I answer the question directly with the first sentence I made? Yes, I answered the question, what is a place? I said Malta. Now I'm going to outline reasons. What is a Malta? Basically, it is a country drenched in history and offers an abundance of activities for travelers. So now I need to mention the examples of those activities for travelers. There are churches, catacombs, and air raid shelters that date back to the Second World War. They also have bastions from St. John's Knights. As a person who likes going to the beach, I could also take a dive at one of the many wrecks or even take a dip in one of the many beautiful inlets and bays of this country. Those are the examples that I've listed. What about the conclusion, the summary? Of course, these are just some of the things Malta has to offer. It really is a wonderful holiday destination. That is your point. Let's try what is your favorite fruit? Mm. Let's do prep method here. Banana. Banana is the fruit that I like eating the most. Ano reason? Because this fruit is good for digestion and helps in replenishing the electrolyte imbalances of the body. For example, when I go to the gym, I always put a banana or two in my bag so that I can get a healthy snack. That is why I think banana is really a healthy fruit that is the reason why it's my favorite. Okay. Color. What's your favorite color? The color that I like the most is crimson. For me, crimson is a color that represents confidence. For example, I'm wearing my favorite crimson bracelet right now. That's why it's my favorite color. So prep method, answer, reason, answer the question why, give me examples, enumerate, and then summarize by saying, that is why this is my favorite. All right. Questions for the prep method. Okay. When do you want to watch television? Daytime or nighttime? Prep method. I prefer watching television programs during nighttime because, the new reason, I have so many things to do during the day. For example, I need to go to work and um, do some exercise. So I don't have much time to fit watching TV in my schedule. But when nighttime comes, 
I need to get information about the, the news. That's why I prefer watching TV at night. That is how you should answer questions in the exam. Questions. All right. So what if the question is difficult? All right. Again, you don't have an excuse. You're my students. There's no excuse. Okay. Why a whole of a manhole is brown. Jeffrey, why a hole of a manhole is round? Leslie. Why a hole of a manhole is round? Well, that's a difficult question, and uh, I in the exam, to... Leslie, you don't say. Well, it's a difficult question. You don't say that. But to do First. it properly, sir. Yes. Okay. Here's the thing. Many of you shit. Ano yan, di ba? Yes. Tama ba, Leslie? Ano ba yung hype na yan? Napa panong ba sa exam po nieta, di ba? Patako pa. Okay. Parang gusto mo na magmura. Yeah. Ini na ako na lupa. Yeah. Why a hole of a manhole is round? If you don't know the answer to the question, here's how you can get out of the situation. Tell the examiner, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know the answer to your question. But when I get home today, I will do my research about it. Okay, let me ask you again, Leslie. This time, answer using the one, one uh, on this text that I typed. So Leslie, why a hole of a manhole is round? I'm sorry, sir. I don't know the answer to your question, but when I get home today, I will do my research about it. Very good. That's it. You become honest. You be honest to the examiner. Never uh, invent ideas that you know you don't know. All right. Be honest. Examiners admire honesty. Sir, will it affect my score if I tell them? that I don't know the answer to the question. Take a look at this. This exam is a communication test. It tests the aspect of your communication. It doesn't check whether your answer is accurate or not because we have differences in our answers. Like my favorite color might be red. Your favorite color could be orange or um, Jocelyn's favorite color might be blue. We don't know. We have variations here. So. You answer this only one time because exam there's a tendency that examiners ask a very difficult question on the test. You tell the examiner, I don't know, but you still have to communicate by saying that you will do your research about it. So there were many variations. You can do um, unfortunately, you can do unfortunately, my knowledge about manhole is limited but as soon as i get home today i will definitely do my research about it and don't forget thank you that's it kevin why do you think a hole of a manhole is round Unfortunately, my knowledge about manhole is limited. But as soon as I get home today, I will definitely do my research about it. Thank you. That means that I don't know the answer. Can we move on? That's it. That's basically it. That's it. So um, that's how you answer questions. 
with uh, yes jocelyn you raise a hand uh, yes sir uh sir what if the first question uh of the examiner is is difficult and then you answer that uh that uh i'm sorry already. yeah mm -hmm. already and then uh the examiner gave you the uh another question as difficult as the first one mm -hmm. <laughs> will, will you also answer will you answer again that i'm sorry i can, i don't know the answer so actually we haven't encountered um two in a row difficult questions but okay again we might not know what will happen kasi mapaglaruan tadhana again so first of all ang gagawin natin magdasal para i-adjust tayo sa mga ganung kasamaan no? but again if that happens we cannot help ourselves if we do not know. Let's say, tinanong say why hold for manual's round, uh, and then the examiner asks you a question about um, what is the difference between the revised penal code of California to the revised mm -hmm. penal code of Chicago. That's it. All right. Okay. Uh, if we're not talking about manholes, Kevin, let's talk about this. What is the difference? between the revised penal code of Chicago, the revised penal code of California. Well, to be honest, they will not go that far. But I just want to let you know, Jocelyn, that the difficulty level of why manhole is round is the same as difficulty level of the difference between the revised penal code of the two areas I've mentioned. So this is how I answer, okay? I don't know much about the revised penal code of Chicago and California and their differences because I am a resident of the Philippines and I've lived here for 28 years of my life. But please understand that uh, since I don't have any ideas about your question, I will still do my best to try and get ideas about them when I get home today. That's it. So you have to do a variation. You have to start convincing them that, okay, I don't have an idea, pero may reason. Because your mm -hmm. question is asking me to compare Chicago and California's revised penal code, and I live here in the Philippines. I don't know those locations any, uh, anyway. So that's what I'm going to do. So yes, it is allowed, but you come up with a variation of it. Okay, sir. Okay, but let's hope for the best na hindi matanong yan. Through prayers. Prayer works, Jocelyn. Oh, <laughs> thank you, po, All right. sir. All right, so to answer your question, Apakasimple lang po, bakit bilog ang manhole? Alright? Because, ito yung mga reason natin, round tubes are the strongest materials. Yeah? And most material efficient. Let me change the color here. Round tubes are the strongest and most material efficient shape against the compression of earth. It is easier to dig a circular hole and thus the cover is also circular. Um, can you confirm this? Uh, princess, Mas madali bang maghukay ng pabilog kaysa maghukay ng pa-heart, princess? Bilog po, mas madali. Yes, tama, di ba? Oh. What about LJ Nina? Mas madali bang humukay ng pabilog kaysa pa-star? Yes, sir. Mas madali po. Hmm. Nakita na ba kayo ng humukay tapos star? Kung shape? LJ Nina? Ba, wow, gagawa ng pundasyon, di ba? Humukay pa-star. Pero mas madali po yung bilog. But nobody does that, right? Digging a hole? Star-shaped hole? Who does that? What else? Ito, doon tayo sa cover. Circular covers do not need to be rotated to align when the covering is circular. Human beings have roughly circular midsections. So, para mag yung mga people doon. A round manhole cover can easily be moved being rolled in tradition. So if you want to have your manhole cover differently shaped diba? you have to cut the hole differently and you have to also um papasadya mo pa yung cover niya so it's tougher so you can explain it like that so now here are the list of questions that um part three would feature. Now, you don't have to copy. You don't have to write them down. That's barbaric. I will be posting this 
on our Facebook group later. Is that okay with you guys? Yes, sir. Yes, or does sir. any one of you want to copy it right now? If you want, go on. All right. So I'm going to pick questions and I'm going to ask you one by one. This is the part of the test that I like. This is the part of the review that I like. This one, sumunan natin sa baba, kay Jao. Jao, are you with us? Yes, sir, I'm in. Okay. Jao, my question is number 11. What are the things that you like in the city? Well, in fact, due to the globalization, nowadays, we experience a lot of um, improvement in terms of facilities. Well, in our city, I would like the improvement of the convenience store because it is now mm -hmm. more comfortable and efficient. In okay, every thank you, Jao. But the first statement is something that I would like you to change. Because the question is, what are things like in the city? So you can answer simply by saying, there are many things that I like in my city. Simple as that. There are many things that I like in my city. Number one, the malls are very accessible. The highways are improved. Again, sabi mo, a convenience store. Diba? So that's the first thing. You affirm. You tell the examiner that, yes, I actually have many things that I like in the city. What are the things that you like in the city, Jao? Sorry, sir. What are the things that you like in the city? Well, there are a lot of things I like in the city. Okay, you may uh, now stop. Okay, now then. Yun lang. Yun lang gusto ko Jao na marinig from you. Thank you so much. Thank you, diba? sir. Is it easier to do that, Jao? Yes, sir. Told you. Okay, next. Um, this one would be for Christian J. Carrion. Christian, are you with us? Yes, sir. All right. Um, my question is number nine. What rules are imposed in your home? Okay. The rules that impose at my home, well, basically my, my parents is more of like a traditional one. Uh, some says, uh, uh, it's more of the uh, Asian, Asian culture where uh, more of, there were more of uh, conservative, um, okay. strict on, on timelines. Well, okay, so Christian, let me stop you there. You spent almost 25 seconds explaining what your parents are, but you didn't tell me even one rule imposed at your home. <laughs> Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Now tell me. Ito, simplihan natin, Christian. Tell me about a rule na impose sa bahay mo. Isa lang. Uh, actually, don't get late. Yep. Hmm. Uh, don't be late. <laughs> don't go home late. Yeah. Ang tawag natin doon. For a few hours. Yeah. But there are many rules that are imposed in my home. Mm. I consider my parents very traditional. And you know, Asian parents, they tend to be very strict with their children. And as I was growing up, the most important rule that we have to follow is never get home past 10 p.m. Or else we would get punished. Mm. <laughs> All right, so Christian, thank you so much for that. Thank you, sir. All right, next question. This would be for Leslie. Yes, sir. I'm Ian. Can you hear me? Yes, po. All right. So my question, let me go to the next uh, page. Dahil nakita mo na tong page na to. Not a fair. Yeah. <laughs> so, Leslie, my question for you is um, what can you suggest for those who work on a shifting schedule so that they can spend more time with their family. 
So working on a shifting schedule is a bit difficult. That's mm-hmm. why that's why I I encourage them to arrange their schedule well. For that reason, they will find enough time to spare with their family. For example, going to the park or buying some stuff. For that, in that case, I find that um, arranging the schedule is much easier than doing it. Oh, no. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. No, no miss mo lang yung word na doing it promptly. Parang gagawin mo yeah. siya on the spot. Yeah, yeah. Right? But that's it. You did the point, you did the reason, you give me examples, and then you summarize it. That's it. I like everything no, about it. time, sir. Time pressure. <laughs> okay, it's okay. You don't have to worry much about that. Next, um, Jocelyn. Jocelyn? All right. My question is this. Is it advisable to buy while you are with your family? Uh, I think, sir, that it is advisable uh, to purchase anything together with your family. So they, it's not only you who will decide to purchase that thing, but it's a, uh, it's with a family member. Yes, that's very creative. I like how you answer, Jocelyn. Good job. Thank you, sir. All right, Jeffrey, are you with us, Jeffrey? Yes, sir, nag-isip nga ng balay. <laughs> All right, Jeffrey, here it is. You know what? I'm going to ask you this question. What you remembered most in your school? Number 31. Memory. Very memorable experience. Or a teacher that you had. Pwede ba tagal, sir? Ah, no. I need you to exercise speaking in English as early as now. So no matter how simple your sentences are, it's okay, Jeffrey. Uh, trouble, sir. Trouble? Yes, sir. The, re- the idea that you remember most in your school is trouble? Yes, sir. Mm. I Big want to trouble. teach you something else. Because, you know, when you talk to the examiner about trouble or how troublesome you are when you were younger, you know, ano yun? Parang pag-uusapan nyo lang kung sa suntukan, di ba? Or away. Think of something else. Yung masaya. Field trip. Tingin mo ba, Jeffrey, memorable ang field trip? Hindi ako sa sumasama sa ganun. Okay. Ano pa? Ano pa ba? <laughs> Nakapagpunta na ba kayo sa ano? Nakapag-participate ka ba sa mga school, ano? Um, school uh, sports, activity? sir. Yes, sir. Sports. Yes, sir. O, di ba? Pwede yan. Hmm. Playing volleyball, Did basketball. Yes, sir. Nalo ba kayo? Yes, sir. O, di ba? That's it. O. The thing that I remember most when I was still studying was when I won championship of basketball together with my friends. Pwede ba yun, Jeffrey? Yes, sir. O, sige, let me hear it. Uh, I remember most in uh, my school. In school, uh, I champion in volleyball. Mm-hmm. Um, basketball. Okay. What year was that, Jeffrey? Can you remember? 2008, sir. You can add that. Diba? In 2008. Para mas bahaba. Diba? The longer the, the statement, the better. Thank you so much for that, Jeffrey. Thank you, sir. All right. Next question would be for... I think meron pa ako isang page. Uh, Try pa ako dito eh. Nalang pala. All right. Favorite part of the house when you were still a child? LJ, I have this question for you, number one. I want you to answer me your favorite um, part of the house when you were a child. Sir, wala po si LJ. Ay, wala. Pumasok na ba siya, Nina? Tinama po sandali ng kapatid niya. Ah, okay. Sige. Oh, Nina, ikaw. What is your favorite part of the house when you were a child? My favorite part of the house when I was a child is the garden. Because I can play 
with my friends in the garden, especially. It's still the same favorite part of the house that you have right now, or is it different now that you are a grown up? Yeah, it's still the same. Oh, that's nice. So thank you so much, Nina. Yes, thank you, sir. Okay, so who else? Princess! Princess! Princess, princess, I have this Sorry. question for you. Uh, my question for you would be, how do you feel when it rains? Yeah. Actually, rainy season is not my favorite weather because I find, I find myself lazy and unproductive. Also, it, also it, it makes my mood down. Okay. So, you know, princess, many people find it difficult to exercise when it rains. Are there any exercises you can suggest those people when it rains? Well, I think it it depends on their preference. You know, I can please people, but my advice would be try to be productive, even though it's rainy season. How how, how people can do that? How do you think they can do that? Um, by starting their day with hot coffee and you know, a, a motivational quotes from their uh, diaries or Bible. Books. Okay, thank you so much, Princess. I don't want to tell them what they need to do. Be, you know, be active. Tell them, I think, that the activities that people can do even when they're inside the house will be doing household chores. Diba? So they can do some stretching inside the house or they can perhaps help in household chores. Wala na ba? So Jeffrey, Jocelyn, Leslie, natanong ko na pala lahat. Okay. So, final words. All right, let us uh, proceed to the final words. So which do you prefer? Okay, pay attention to the question and listen carefully. Answer immediately in as much detail as you can. So the promptness of your ability to respond to question is also going to be measured. Explain your answers, draw on your experience and give examples. All right, so you can use your experience, especially in part three, experience matters. Speak like there's no tomorrow. You can be as talkative as you can. Um, Leslie and Princess, I like how talkative you were. So I want you to continue on doing that. So um, the remaining students, if you can be as talkative as they were without um, limiting and without going overboard the topic, that will be uh, very well. So explain your answers. The examiner wants to hear whether you can talk at length on a range of topic. Remember, there's no right or wrong answer. Like the favorite color that I like is different from the favorite color of Jeffrey. Jocelyn, you have a different favorite fruit. Leslie, you, don't, you might not like eating a vegetable. I don't know, but we're different. So there's no right or wrong answer. But Avoid controversial topics. So when you say avoid controversial topics, there are two things that I want you to avoid. I want you to avoid religion. And I want you to talk about um, politics as much as possible. Avoid, avoid, avoid. So tell me about the person you would like to meet in the future, the president of the Philippines. You don't say that because that's politics. Uh, a person that you would like to meet in the future, and then you mention um, the Pope. Don't tell that because that is, uh, that is religion. So what is a song that you like to listen to? I like to listen to worship songs as much as possible. Avoid religion, avoid politics because we want to avoid controversy as much as possible. Remember that this is a speaking test. We don't want to put any laundry lists or any uh, fluffs that are not related to the topic. All right, as much as possible, avoid religion, avoid politics. I hope that I made my uh, stand clear about this idea. So uh, avoid jargon, avoid slang words, be confident. So when you be confident, you stand upright and then you tell yourself that you can do it. Speak clearly at the natural pace, it's important. So at this one, um, this will be the last question for today. Do you think advertising influences what people buy? 
Who among you wants to answer this one? Or do you just want me to answer this for you? Okay. Well, if yes. this is the question, do you think advertising? Yes, Jocelyn, you want to answer? I no, no, sir. <laughs> so, do you think advertising influences what people buy? So, first of all, you understand that advertising is basically letting people know that the product exists, letting people understand the information about the product. So, do you think advers advertising affects? how people purchase items. Yes. So you say, you answer in affirmative. Kevin, do you think advertising influences what people buy? Definitely. I think that the ultimate goal of advertising is to let people know what the product is and what the features of the product as compared to its competitors. So I believe that it does affect the purchasing behavior of people. So in summary, Advertising influences what people buy. That's it. All right. So you have to answer those questions simply in as much detail as you can. So think and speak in English. Practice whenever there's a chance. Again, coaching sessions are there for you. Consider recording yourself for practicing. Familiarize yourself with topics that you fear about. Dress appropriately. Bring an ID. Do not believe. Uh, during the exam, be confident. Do not sit down unless advised. This one, I want to put... Um, a highlight here. You will stand here beside the, the, the chair and then you will not sit. Okay, you wait for the examiners to tell you. Late, I'm, I'm going to sneeze. I'm going to meet myself. I'm back. All right. All right. So do not sit down unless advised. So never sit. Let the examiner tell you, please sit down. And when the examiner does tell you to sit down, let the examiner know, uh, thank you. Tell them that you're uh, thanking them because they let you sit. All right. So please sit down. Then sit slowly. Tell the examiner, thank you. All right. Establish a connection with the examiner. Eye to eye contact. Organize thoughts and have presence of mind. Avoid short answers. Always try to expound. Always try to lengthen your discussion. Be assertive. This is your answer. This is what you believe in. You will not change your mind. Avoid repetition of words. Avoid using the words that examiners have already used. Do not hesitate to correct yourself. If you understood that you commit a mistake, change it right away. And then um, do not be too self-preoccupied. Later. So, kung nagkamali ka, accept that you have committed a mistake, correct it, and then move on. Okay? Use the correct verb tense and do your best. During the exam, give answers that you can talk more about. As I've mentioned, I can talk that my favorite food is adobo, but I would choose ice cream because that's where I can talk more about. Again, no right or wrong answers. The examiner will assess on how well you performed, uh, how you can express your ideas and opinions in good English. Imagine you're talking to a friend. So your tone must sound a bit friendly, not too formal. So you're trying to befriend the examiner. Yes, Leslie. Sir, is it okay to do hand gestures like what you're doing while we're talking? Yes. yes. Actually, hand gestures allow candidates to be more confident. It helps themselves loosen up. But we don't want to overdo hand gestures. Like, hi, my name is Kevin. Pakalikot <laughs> naman, umpisa pa lang. Ano kasi karate kid, di ba? Jackie Chan. So we use hand gestures to if we want to make our points heard. So it, this is actually what I teach in pronunciation major. Okay. So pag nasa pronunciation na tayo, I will teach the importance of hand gestures and eye-to-eye -eye contact and uh, head movement, how it accentuates the, the effect of your uh, speech because it, it adds to the impact. So if, it's, if your vocal preference is about 30%, your body language speaks like 70%. It's actually established uh, research 
So we use hand gestures because according to research, people who does hand gesture, uh, people who do hand gestures, according to the listeners or the readers, they look more confident. And we want to look confident in front of the examiner. So you can use hand gestures when you require yourself to, okay? And again, body language, um, head tilts, head movements, eye movements, eyebrows, all those together, okay? All right. After the exam, do not ask for your score. Thank the examiner. Thank you so much. That's it. And then leave the room. Huwag namang kaldabog yung pintuan. Dahan-dahan is All right. Frequently asked questions. I know many of you guys have questions, but I'm, I have listed in them, them down here. Can I choose the topic to be talked about? No. The examiners will be the one to facilitate asking in the, of the question. You will be the one to choose. So we don't know what questions you will get asked. But it is important that you prepare beforehand by looking at our Facebook group and um, looking at what the questions are that the frequently asked questions of my students before. Do we really need to talk for two minutes in task two? Yes, actually you have to speak more. You have to speak much longer than two minutes. If you can talk for uh, two, two minutes and 20 seconds, do it. Uh, especially if the examiner hasn't asked you to stop yet. But remember, the minimum for two minutes, you should have already uh, accomplished all those bullet points because Let's say, nasa two-minute mark ka na, nakakatatlong bullet point ka pa lang, ang haba na nung third bullet point, hindi mo nasagot yung last bullet point, and then the examiner started with part three, then you missed the opportunity to answer the last bullet point. Again, a missed bullet point means you will not get seven. You have four bullet points, just missing one means you will get six or lower. Just missing one. So that's how important part two is. What if I really do not have an idea about the topic? Let the examiner know. I'm sorry, I don't have an idea about your question, but when I get home, I'll do my research about it. How long should I talk when I'm asked a question? Talk how long you want, but make sure that you not fall out of topic. What is a shop that you like visiting? What is a shop that you like the most, Kevin? Well, the shop that I like is Bench and SM Mega Mall. It's so big and it's located in Mandaluyong City. It's one of the largest cities in my country where the National Central Center for Mental Health is also located. Sabin, wow, ang haba naman ng sagot. Pero take a look at that. It's not relevant. The question is about the shop. I don't want to know about the mall or where the mall is located or whether the National Center for Mental Health is located. What I need to know is why do you like this shop? compared to any other shops that sells the same thing. So you explain. Do not fall out of topic. Should I keep on talking until the examiner asks the next question? Yes. Speak as if there's no tomorrow. Talkativeness, promptness um, will be assessed here. Is accent required in the examination? Actually, no. You do not have to fake your accent. You don't have, as much as possible, we avoid American accent. American accent is when you say, Gonna, yeah, cause, well. So when you, when you do wanna, okay? Those are the features of American accent. So accent must be neutral in the speaking test, all right? Next, what if I didn't hear the question clearly? Ask the examiner to repeat the question, but in a very polite manner. Do I have to answer all the questions in task card? Yes, please. Your score depends on task two. It depends on task two more than anything in your exam. What are the topics that are usually asked during the exam? I have uploaded the uh, PDF, two PDFs already para sa yun, in yung uh, speaking. That would be the, uh, that would be on my Google Drive already. And na lahat ng tanong. It's uh, 11 pages yung isa, nasa 25 pages yung isa. And I also post regularly any mga nagiging questions sa mga students ko, both in the Philippines and other countries. So we have a list of the possible questions that you can get asked. So what you say is important, grammar, vocab, fluency, pronunciation, but how you say it also matters. Delivery, content, style, charisma, posture, gestures, and eye contact. So 
final reminder is to practice and pray. So that will be the end of my lecture. I just want to add something, all right, about the requirements. Um, your requirements will now include a vaccination card. So keep your vaccination card with you. Uh, they didn't mention what vaccine are they only allowing for the test, but vaccination card is uh, already good. If you're going to take the exams in Nueva Ecija and uh, you are from Nueva Ecija, I believe that an antigen test will be required. Plus, you will also be required to, um, to provide a declaration form, okay, from your barangay or your city health that you are not exposed to COVID for the past 14 days. So, and never forget the copy of the ID that you use for the exam. That is very important. So for the October test takers, November first week test takers, those are important things to remember. So we will be uh, uploading some informative uh, posts, some infographics on the group so that you will get reminded what are the things. We're just clarifying pa kasi, no? uh, We're still clarifying um, what is the complete requirement for the test this coming 23rd and 30th of October in Cabanatuan City. And you know the requirements vary depending on the place where you take the test. So that's it. But if you are vaccinated, then you will be uh, required to bring your vaccination card with you during the test. So that's all for the um, replay watchers. I will be stopping.